Hello, friends, and welcome to day 57 of 90. As you can see, we're in a bit of a different environment. It looks like an old folks museum, but it's not an old folks museum. It's Papa and Nana's house. So I'm already getting some glares, I think, from my comments, but that's okay. It's not bad. We love coming to Papa and Nana's house. Yeah, it's always fun. It's Thanksgiving Eve. Mm -hmm. So just to let you know, there's already been some cooking going on today. There's uh, a couple of pies sitting in there. There's some eggs that have been boiled for deviled eggs. There was almost a tragedy. With there was the almost turkey. a tragedy with the turkey. Yeah. There was apparently some type of a monstrosity machinery out eating the trees in the back. And it took out the electricity for about 45 minutes. So apparently... Uh, Nana was outside in her uh, what, what nightgown. A, not a nightgown. What's the with the robe? robe? Yeah, but old people don't call it that. They don't call it a robe. They call it their bed clothes or <laughs> something. That's okay. what the old people were. She was running around freaking out about the electricity being out. But Papa went out and apparently set them straight. I don't know if he set them straight or if he just went down there and stuck, snuck a smoke with them or something. <laughs> just trying to keep Nana from uh, going down there and having some sort of a physical altercation. <laughs> but we are excited to be here. We love spending time with family. Uncle Nathan is here. And so tomorrow, Grandma and Uncle Carrie and Aunt Uncle Nathan Carrie. and Aunt Travis... <laughs> We'll be here along with Cousin Jackson, so it's going to be a fun day. Uh, but today is also day 21 of the Draw the Circle Prayer Challenge. Today was Set Your Foot. It was. So the verse with today's uh, devotion was, I'm giving you every square inch of the land you set your foot on from Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. So at, at this point, God was talking to Joshua and saying, that as you go into the promised land, I'm going to give you every inch that you set your foot on. What a promise. Yeah. And he didn't tell them how many times they had to set their feet on it. It just was go, set your foot on it, and it's yours. So he talked a little bit about what he has gotten back since this the book the circle maker was written he talks a little bit about how people have been circling uh the capital uh cap chaplains and coaches circling nfl fields mlb fields nba courts it says one reader even circled his bank praying for a financial miracle until law enforcement intervened they thought he was casing the joint so uh, he talks about that there's nothing magical about physically circling something in prayer, but it does do something. Mm -hmm. It gets you in a different mindset. It makes you, like he said, that his prayer pace is slower than his normal pace. And you slow down, and as you're praying through it, you're not just rushing. So he talks about uh, how we typically quit as soon as we start. So the, the circling helps you sort of stay in that mindset for longer than just saying, you know, I need this to happen, and then you, you move on. Mm -hmm. Often we do that. We sort of get to a point where we say, well, you know, I need a miracle to happen, and then we pray for it for a day or two, and then we've, we've gone on, and we've, you know, life has gotten busy, and you just sort of forget about it. You don't go back to it. So uh, the, the act of circling it, whether you're – physically walking around something in a circle or uh, as i do a lot i'll draw a circle around a thought in my prayer journal and i've done that every day since we started the challenge and it's kept three or four things at the top of my mind since we've started um pray a perimeter says he's he over the years he's drawn prayer circles around promises in scripture and promises the holy spirit has conceived in his spirit um he talks about as a seminary student trying a church plant in chicago failing and then heading into uh, washington dc with an opportunity to start another one mm -hmm. uh, he found himself timid well he didn't want to do it he just said no 
not going to do it. So. And then he felt prompted to do his prayer walk, right? Yep. And he did his prayer walk, prayer walk around 4.7 miles. And now they have several buildings on that parameter. And he goes back to that point, that prayer walk being the beginning of the miracles that God has done within Washington, D.C. Um, I would encourage anybody that's been a part of this study to, to take a few minutes and look at what National Community Church is doing and has done over the last 20 years in Washington, D.C. Um, from where we are, our senator is James Lankford. And James Langford has very good things to say about National Community Church and uh, the work that's being done there. I think he and Mark Batterson have talked several times. Mark Batterson mentions him in this book for sure, and I think he said something or two in The Circle Maker. I don't really remember. He did. Um, but there's good things happening on Capitol Hill because of National Community Church. And it started with a 4.7-mile prayer walk when the church was new, he says there was nothing easy about the first year of church. Total church income was $2,000 a month, and $1,600 of that went to rent the place where they held their services. He says on a good Sunday, 25 people showed up. And he said, that's when I learned to close my eyes and worship because it was too depressing to open them. Um, and sometimes when you feel that way, all you, all you have left is to depend on God for a miracle. Yeah. And I think it's important, too, that um, we mentioned, because he doesn't really mention it here, but he does in The Circle Maker, that during that time where his the income was 2000 and the rent was 1600 he had a second job to make ends meet. And so he was praying like it depended on God and worked like it depended on him. He was not getting much sleep. He was doing what he needed to do to follow the promptings. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you'll hear people that'll just say, well, I gotta live on $400. No, you can work and you can do more than one thing. Well, it's like we talked about yesterday, go set ready. Yeah. So sometimes you gotta be willing to go before everything is set and before you're really ready. He, he started the prayer walk based on what God said to Joshua about every square inch that you set your foot on, I'm going to give it to you. And he did his 4.7 mile prayer walk. And he said, um, it took him three hours to complete. He says, since the day I drew the prayer circle around Capitol Hill, National Community Church has grown into one church with eight campuses around the Metro DC area. And all six of the properties we have miraculously purchased Ebenezer's Coffee House, the Miracle Theater on Barracks Row, and a $29 million castle on Capitol Hill are right on that circle. Coincidence? More like Providence. When the Israelites circled Jericho, they had no idea how God would give them the city, but they didn't let what they didn't know keep them from obeying the command they had been given. So, let me encourage you, if you feel like that God has put something on your heart, Continue to move forward. Don't just stand stagnant. Don't just sit and wait. Continue to move. Do the last thing that he told you to do until he tells you to do the next thing. Word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we pass the plate now. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's right. We got to have the invitation. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, the thought for today, God is not a genie in a bottle, and your wish is not his command. His command better be your wish. So this is sort of what we've talked about with the last couple of uh, Sunday night meetings. We're talking about prayer moving the heart of God, mm -hmm. and it, it does move the heart of God, but it also changes us. Yeah, and in that just a couple of pages earlier, he says in today's reading that if his command is not your wish, then you'll end up just walking in circles. Yeah, that's true. Very true. So if you feel like you're just walking in circles, maybe you need to reevaluate okay. the wish. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. 
and it's also day 22 in the challenge. And tomorrow is something that uh, can be controversial in certain circles, depending on you know what type of church you may or may not go to. <laughs> but tomorrow is a prayer fleece, so we're going to talk about that. Yep. Today is day 27. 27. Thanksgiving Eve. We should what celebrate you- Thanksgiving Eve like we do Christmas Eve. Why? Well, because there's a lot of prep going into turkey dinners all across this country. Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't think so? Mm. <laughs> You're not all in on Thanksgiving Eve? I have a very different take on Thanksgiving Eve. I have from past job experiences. I know that Thanksgiving Eve is in the bar industry it is the number one money-making night because people are coming home and they're stressed out or they're fearful about going and being around family and so i feel like i'm glad that none of our people are feeling like they have to go to the bar for the night before thanksgiving i think uncle nathan was half loaded when we got here but he's here. <laughs> he's sitting over there in the kitchen. He just gave me the evil eye. I'm surprised he hadn't thrown a book at me or something yet. Looks like he's getting ready to. We better get off here before he does. Uh, day 27, I'm thankful for family. I think I might have talked about that last night. But, I mean, I'm truly thankful for family and being able to come, uh, especially to a place like this that has so many memories for our kids and for me and for you and it's relaxing to be here i'm super thankful that we're able to come and be here awesome i am thankful for tenants that do what they're supposed to do oh yeah i went and saw the one that got moved out of today nice so i'm thankful whenever people are respectful and understand the value of other people's property i'm thankful for that yeah all right so tomorrow happy thanksgiving day 58 we'll see you guys then have a great night